Hi guys, hope you're well. So I want to tell you a lovely little story about the most amazing smoked salmon. These stories, I believe, need to be told about talented people that put everything on the line and everything into making the very, very best. Check this out. This is the story of the secret smokehouse. There was this amazing old chap who smoked kippers on the west coast of Scotland, just south of Loch Gilphead. And it was just this ancient old smokehouse. We'd go there on the Saturday morning and you'd always go in and ask them what they did. It was all, it was all secret, secret this, secret that. Which then has obviously kind of got an influence on the name of the business. It started by complete accident. I'd come to a junction in my career, working career, and uh, 15 years in London working away. And then I went back up to Scotland to kind of decompress from the whole thing. Built this smoker using pallets to start smoking fish. And I then came back down to London to basically figure out what, what it was that I was doing. Lived in and around the east end of London for about 15 years, but just moved into a place down in Stepney. My fish filleting was appalling, like I'd hacked away to it. And um, right next to Stepney is, of course, Billingsgate Fish Market. So I thought, actually, I think I'm just going to improve my skills. So I enrolled in this amazing fish mongering course down at Billingsgate. And then it suddenly dawned on me, you know, that eureka moment. Why don't I build another smoker in the back garden? Off I set, 300 quid in my back pocket, bought a shed, all the equipment you need to do it, and, you know, my new skill of being able to fill it, and I started producing it in, in the east end of London. All these coincidences started happening, and I unearthed all this rich, rich history of smoke houses in Stepney, and that was all by chance when I walked into my local pub called The Peacock. Proper East End pub. From the outside, definitely looks closed. Go in and then, um, you know, almost like the music stops and people's heads turn around. And this lovely old guy came up to me and just in introduced himself and he offered me a drink and he was like, all right, boy, you know, where are you from? You know, what are you doing? I just thought I'd come for a drink. And chatting away and all the rest of it. And, you know, they're all, Amazing, they've all got amazing stories, these, these lovely guys. And it's just, like, honestly, you're like putty in their hands just listening to these incredible, of when they were younger or somebody used to work down Billingsgate. And then I was like, oh, I smoke fish. I'm smoking fish in the back garden. And they all, their ears all prick up and then tell me these incredible stories about smoke houses that used to be around in Stepney. And, and then that's it, they were just like trying to suss out to see what if I was legit. Yeah, they, I think they thought that I was a, an undercover policeman or something like that. It was it was very funny. They then became ultimately my, my litmus paper for what was going on because I, you can't fool them. If you give them a bit of smoked haddock and it's not up to scratch, they'll, they'll tell you they will tell you and they won't mince their words. The first time they tasted the haddock and the kippers, one of the comments I'll never forget was, it was the best smoked haddock he'd, he'd tasted in like 25 years. And I was just, right, okay, if if these guys are liking it, then fine, let's just keep carrying on. And that confidence that they gave me, I will never forget how they in the Peacock just totally and utterly supported me. And then my milkman became my Akado delivery service. And he started taking orders on his milk run around Stepney. And I then started selling out and then realized that there was a business behind it. There really wasn't a no frills smokehouse that just was doing one thing well. And that was smoking it with the old fashioned way. Not trying to infuse it, not trying to be clever, just like really beautiful, beautifully sourced and then beautifully cured and smoked fish. There also wasn't any plan B, you know, it had to work. You know, if you're gonna do this, balls on the line, go for it and don't look back. Word had got out that I was smoking fish and a phone call came in from, from a chef. A meeting was put in the diary. I didn't know what I was going into the environment, anything whatsoever, so I kind of bounced along with a couple of sides of smoked salmon under my arm. Got, got taken into the kitchen and there was this kitchen full of chefs, like 20 chefs, and they all stopped. And then the main chef came in, asking a million questions about what I was doing, how I was doing it, etc. Turning it upside down, slicing it, putting it up to the light, smelling it, and, and just generally just seeing if what I was doing was, was genuine and if I was the real McCoy or if I was, you know, blagging it. He was just 
blown away by the flavor. And I said, are you just saying this? Cause I'm, I'm stood in front of you, you know, for all the chefs behind this guide, like basically the chef was Claude Bossy, two Michelin star chef, and he was just blown away by it. And it, it took a, a long time for that to sink in. You become quite blinkered in what you're doing and you only want to do something, I guess, in a selfish way. I, I want to produce a salmon like this or a salt salmon this way. And then all of a sudden somebody tastes it like that and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Right, you know, uh, crikey, we've maybe got something here. We now supply the most insane restaurants and, and hotels here in London. I mean, you can't pull wool over these guys' eyes. It's that flavour, it's that really important flavour that you're trying to get into the fish that allows them to hero it on the plate. And the magic ingredient or the secret ingredient is, I guess, the passion, the love of what we do. There's something romantic and also really amazing about staying small and true to what it is and why I set it up. In the shed here, we have grown, not gonna lie, but we've never changed our process. We're not big mass producer. We don't have big machines, filleting machines, special things to pin bone or fancy circular knives. Everything is done by hand. And with that, I think there's so much power in it. Why be anything bigger than what you are? Because as soon as you grow way too big, then you're just producing average again. And that's not what I set it up for.